part three of our documentary along the China front in Arunachal Pradesh, we travel from Sela to Assam Hill, Joginder Memorial and Bumla, where India commands the Tawang Heights. At 13,700 feet, Sela meets the clouds and we encounter a family of tourists enjoying the remnants of snow near the still semi-frozen Sela Lake. There are said to be 108 lakes in the area sacred to Tibetan Buddhists and we make our way through this misty, mystical route to Tawang, the spiritual and cultural nucleus of the region. Ta means horse and Wang is chosen. The name is believed to have been given by Mera Lama Lodre Gyatso who was entrusted with building a monastery by the fifth Dalai Lama. One legend has it that Lama Gyatso was sitting in prayer for guidance. When he opened his eyes, he found his horse missing. After a search, he found his horse on top of a hill where he founded the second biggest and one of the oldest monasteries in Asia in 1681. Tawang is a, a very old historical place, uh, birthplace of the sixth Dalai Lama and obviously one of the roots of ingress, even subsequently a little away for the uh, 14th Dalai Lama, Dalai Lama, His Holiness, who came from, uh, Kin, from there to Kinzamani and into this thing. And also a place where you could virtually say before you enter Sonazong and go right up to Lhasa, the last of the places where that mon uh, first did that monastery, and beside that, the, where the people are there, the Mampas are staying there, the Buddhists are there. So it's uh, one place which has always been historically and uh, strategically from the point of view of uh, access to Lhasa. Claude R.P., Tibetologist and Sinologist, agrees that the Chinese Communist Party's renaming of places in Arunachal Pradesh is a gimmick. The renaming of these uh, 15 places uh, two, three years ago, uh, they have taken the old Tibetan name, like Gosam Chöpe, uh, they call uh, Chöten Kapo, White uh, Stupa, and they've transcribed it in Pinyin, so you, you, it's very difficult to recognize, but it's just a gimmick. The monastery in Tawang is affiliated with Losoling uh, Monastery, Drepong, uh, in Tibet, near Lhasa. That was one of the largest. But I'm in Pondicherry. Sometimes the church in Pondicherry is affiliated with the Vatican. It doesn't mean that uh, Pondicherry belongs to the state of Vatican. So there were uh, religious affiliation which means that the monks of uh, Tawang Monastery used to go to, uh, to, to Tibet, to central Tibet, to Losoling. And it is true that till 1914, when it, uh, the agreement was signed between Tibet and India, the, some taxes, not taxes, but some offerings, religious offering. You know, you go to any mandir or church, or you give an offering. So that was offered to uh, Losoling Monastery. So that's uh, the basis of the claim, Chinese claim, but it's not a claim. I think the, this claim came um, after India discovered in the mid-50s that the road was being built in Naksach. The Chinese Communist Party claiming the whole 83,743 square kilometers of Arunachal Pradesh as South Tibet is a fabrication, Cloud RP adds. There's no Chinese presence till 1955-56 in this, in this area. After 86, when Arunachal became a full state of the Union of India, uh, they start calling it Southern Tibet. But before that term, Southern Tibet uh, never came up. And in 1960, when Chuen Lai came, Chuen Lai said, we will never give accession. Everything else we are is, is negotiable. So they kept this as, as a bargain uh, against uh, Aksashin, that India would recognize the Aksashin. And uh, uh, the Macmahon line, where the IB, the Indian International Border, with uh, Tibet first and now with uh, China, is, would be recognized by China. 
The 270 odd kilometer journey from Bhalukpong to Tawang takes about 8 hours. In fact, in Arunachal Pradesh, distance is most often measured in time rather than space. The tyranny of geography is also exemplified by the change in altitude from Bhalukpong's 699 feet to Tawang's 10,000 feet above sea level as we wind up and down ridges on the Balipara Charidwar Tawang or BCT road. This gradient also means there's a need to acclimatize to allow the body to become accustomed to lower levels of oxygen and to prevent acute mountain sickness or its more severe forms. This process takes place gradually as one moves up through various levels of altitude, spending time at each level before progressing upwards. There usually are three high altitude areas. Stage 1, 9,000 to 12,000 feet. Stage 2, 12,000 to 15,000 feet. And stage 3, above 15,000 feet, which need different acclimatization periods. The Army is reportedly working on reducing the acclimatization period, with some studies suggesting troops can be inducted from sea level to high altitude areas in as little as four days instead of the usual 10 to 11 days with certain medicines. Another option is the simulation of high altitude conditions at lower levels where formations are based. The challenges for the Indian Army magnified by the differences the PLA faces on the Tibetan plateau, which has an area of 2,005 lakh square kilometers, which are generally above 13,000 to 15,000 feet. It is towards the Tibetan plateau and border, towards the LAC, that we head further higher up on a sunny, clear blue sky day, passing Tawang's iconic Buddha statue, following our pilot gypsy on the winding road as we travel to the Indian Army's Assam Hill post. Cleotard roads and brown, barrenish hilly terrain turns into a sea of colour in summer, our driver tells us, as we pass placid lakes and army areas. Climbing in altitude, the road turns bumpy and slushy with the melting snow. The Assam Hill Post welcomes us on a sunny clear day with its solar and wind converter whirring away. Assam Hill is about 2 kilometers from the LSC with acclimatized and well-armed soldiers in an area with integrated defense, fortified bunkers and observation posts. This post is at 1400 5000 feet. In winters, we witness approximately 5 feet of snow and the temperature goes down to as low as minus 23 degrees centigrade. Well, you have to be motivated when you are staying at this altitude. Uh, you know, uh, for that, we, are specially, we, have, we have specialized training to survive here and to uh, carry out our daily routine. We patrol our area in our area domination patrol. We don't observe the area. We will go to tactical area. जाके चेकिंग करते हैं ताकि वहां पे दुश्मन की कोई कार्रवाई ना हो इसके लिए हम ये कार्रवाई रूटीन में करते हैं इलाके के मौसम को देखते हुए हमें अपने ये कार्रवाई करने में दिक्कतें आती हैं सांस लेने में तकलीफ होती है वी हैव आवर डेली रूटीन वेयर इन वी स्टार्ट ऑफ विद द फिजिकल ट्रेनिंग इन द मॉर्निंग फॉलोड बाय आवर वेपन मेंटेनेंस देन फॉर एग्रेसिव ट्रेनिंग वी हैव वी कैरी आउट ट्रेनिंग विद आवर वेपन्स after that we carry out patrolling activities uh, followed by uh, sentry duties in the night to keep safety and security of our post this post has also witnessed 
मेजर एक्शन इन दर नाइनटीन सिक्सटी टू Talking about action and sacrifice, one is reminded of the famous John Edmonds authored epitaph. When you go home, tell them of us, and say, for your tomorrow, we gave our today. हम अपनी पेट्रोलिंग के दौरान अगर हमारा देश सुरक्षित होली मना रहा है, इससे बड़ी हमारी खुशी के लिए बात क्या हो सकती है? हम अपना त्योहार अगले साल मौका मिलने पर अपनी घर में जाके मना सकते हैं द फीचर डोमिनेट्स रूट्स टू तवांग टाउन अबाउट थर्टी किलोमीटर अवे एंड द ऑब्जेक्टिव इज टू डिनाई एक्सेस टू द एनिमी द वेदर हैज चेंज इन टेन मिनट्स एंड थिन आइसिकल्स हैव बिगन टू फॉर्म इन अ स्लाइट ड्रिजल ऑफ स्नो with the unfazed troops continuing to perform their routines it's weather that even has the crucial all terrain vehicles struggling at times as the snowfall picks up we leave assam hill with the all weather troops still at their commanding heights keeping the tricolor flying high we hope to reach bumla before the weather makes it too dangerous to travel on the road from sun to snow the weather is very fickle we have quickly found out 10 15 minute mein all changed the treacherous terrain punctuated with road refurbishment jcbs road rollers and other machinery lying in wait for better conditions to resume their work as visibility drops we stick like a magnet to the tire tracks of the pilot gypsy ahead At one point we even have to get into another gypsy with snow chains. The ever changing weather sees the snow stop, the roads clear and the clouds shifting away again as we approach Bumla. It's all blue again. Bumla, one of the few mutually recognized frontiers, is at a height of 15200 feet. It is snowbound for almost the entire year. Bumla is also one of the five officially agreed border personnel meeting or BPM points between the Indian Army and the PLA. Both PLA attempts at incursion in Yangtze in October 2021 and December 2022 were among the other incidents discussed here. Also, Bumla has a hotline. So with the help of hotline, uh, the both the army garrison across on the either side of the LAC are connected. and we pass important messages through that we also dominate this area uh, physically by carrying out area domination patrols throughout the year to maintain the sanctity of lsc maintain our territorial integrity in this region with no cameras allowed beyond this point one has to walk to the famous heap of stones at the lsc in the distance the blue roofs the huts on the chinese side where bpms are held the much bigger building on the indian side Maitri Sthal many would say a misnomer in current times Dozens of tourists from across India with permits have come to listen to the stories of bloody battles that turned these snowy peaks red with blood time can't be speeded up here to look into the future though it can be rewound to the pages of history but in, in this modern age uh, mr rp the narratives play a big part the war of narratives Do you think India is doing enough to counter those narratives that China makes claims on Arunachal Pradesh? I think slowly, you see for years India did not even want to allow people or you had to get a in a line permit to go in, in Arunachal after you had another um, uh, restricted area permit or something to get to Bumla or any so whether it's in Ladakh or in Arunachal or in uh, northern Sikkim that the government last 2 3 years has drastically changed the police so i think it's a good thing it's a 
reaffirmation of uh, that it belongs to India and India can open it to whoever they want, keeping in consideration the security issue. One of the security challenges in this region is geography, the Tibetan plateau, where the gradient is more conducive to construction than in up and down mountainous Arunachal Pradesh. About 40 kilometers to the north of Bumla is Tsona Zong, in Tibet autonomous region's Shanan prefecture. The Chinese have built a high-quality motorable road S202 from Shanan right up to Bumla. Several heavily fortified PLA camps are situated near the LAC with advanced landing grounds. And one of those is, defense experts believe, a missile site. A western spur of the S202 leads to Namkachu, where one of the first battles in the 1962 border war took place. In 2021, the Chinese completed another major road through the Tsangpo River Valley, connecting Ningchi city with Medog, the shortest route to the Arunachal Pradesh border to the east of Bumla. In fact, China has an extensive grid of alternate road axes all the way up to the India boundary. And while India has also ramped up road connectivity, military assets and force postures, the differential is still a major challenge. The Chinese have a road which runs right across, amazingly, uh, I would say from Tulungla coming down to Yangtze, coming right in front of uh, Bumla, right going in front of uh, Sumdarong Chu, and then heading towards Hatunga and further up. So you have their road projects running parallel, whereas we have various ridge lines. You have to head on to each of these different different valleys to get on top. So it's a, a place where uh, Tawang has a very strategic importance. Talking about strategic importance, between Bumla and Assam Hills is the Subedar Joginder Singh Paramvir Chakra Posthumous Memorial. He was commanding a platoon of 20 soldiers guarding the IB Ridge and Twin Peaks. This is their story. बनते वो इतिहास हैं माथे सी झुकाने उनकी झुक जाते आकाश हैं बरा नहीं जो भावों से बहती जिसमें रसदार नहीं वह हृदय नहीं पत्थर है जिसमें स्वदेश के लिए प्यार नहीं साहिबान सुबेदार जुगिंदर सिंह फर्स्ट सिख रेजिमेंट से ताल्लुक रखते थे सन 1962 में उनकी बटालियन बुमला सेक्टर में तैनात थी 23 अक्टूबर सन 1962 सुबह 5:30 मिनट चीनी सेना ने बुमला सेक्टर से भारत के ऊपर हमला कर दिया चीनी सेना जब बुमला सेक्टर से आगे बढ़ी तब उनका सामना सुबेदार जुगिंदर सिंह साहब की पलटून के बहादुर जवानों से हुआ सुबेदार जुगिंदर साहब ने इस हमले का मुंह तोड़ जवाब दिया और कई चीनी सैनिकों को मौत के घाट उतार दिया उधर दुश्मन ने भी बिना देरी किए हुए दूसरी बार हमला कर दिया सुबेदार जुगिंदर सिंह साहब के पास सीमित मात्रा में गोला बारूद और जवान होने के बावजूद उन्होंने कुशल युद्ध रणनीति का उदाहरण देते हुए दुश्मन के इस हमले का भी मुंह तोड़ जवाब दिया जिससे दुश्मन तिल मिला उठा और उनका दूसरा हमला भी विफल कर दिया उधर दुश्मन ने अपने आप को एक बार फिर रीऑर्गेनाइज किया चीनी सैनिकों की संख्या ज्यादा होने के कारण हमारे जवान एक एक करके शहीद हो गए इस गुथम गुथा की लड़ाई में सुबेदार जुगिंदर सिंह साहब पूरी तरह घायल हो गए और अंत में इस बड़े पत्थर के पास दुश्मन ने उन्हें युद्ध बंदी बना लिया इस प्रकार एक बहादुर लीडर अपने सैनिकों के साथ मातृभूमि की रक्षा करते करते शहीद हो गए इतिहास कहता है कि वीरों की उम्र ज्यादा नहीं होती इतिहास कहता है कि वीरों की उम्र ज्यादा नहीं होती भौतिक रूप से ना सही उनकी आत्मा अमर होती है लड़े वीरता और वैभव से लड़ते लड़ते चले गए लड़े वीरता और वैभव से लड़ते लड़ते चले गए देखे वो हम सबको 
सीख वीरता की देखे वो हम सबको सीख वीरता की अपना नाम अमर कर गए जय हिंद जबर इन द फाइनल एपिसोड ऑफ कमांडिंग द तवांग हाइट्स वी टेक यू टू पंकांग तेंगसो और पीटीएसओ यांगसे द क्याफो मॉडल बॉर्डर पोस्ट नियर द एलएसी एंड द तवांग वॉर मेमोरियल